Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fuji's Blitz and today we're going to look at some more strange SS divisions. This time we're going to look at the 13th Waffen Mountain Division of SS Hanshar, also known as First Croat, the Nazi Muslim Warriors. Hanshar was actually one of three Muslim divisions that the SS had, but we're only going to concentrate on Hanshar. Strange thing is, we all associate the SS with these blonde-haired, blue-eyed, pure Aryan master race germ of, of pure Germanic stock. That's not necessarily the case. Yes, in the early years of the formations of the SS, that really was the case. You had to trace your bloodlines back, you had to be Germanic. But with the outbreak of war in 1939, more and moreover with the invasion of Russia in 1941, the Germans were struggling to get recruits, so they decided to open up their recruitment, especially in the SS, to non-Germanic people, of which the Hanshar was the first division comprised purely of non-Germanic. The creation of a non-Germanic Muslim division, however, was not foremost in the German minds. It came about due to other things taking place during the war. And the catalyst is all down to Benito Mussolini, the fascist dictator of Italy, who decided that it would be a really good idea to invade Greece. Clearly it wasn't a good idea. The Italians invaded, they got repulsed and then pushed back into Albania, which sent shockwaves through the German high command. Most notably, Greece was allied to Great Britain at the time, and the Germans thought that if the Greeks continued their push, they would push into Romania and be able to steal and take the oil fields in Ploiesht, which the Germans really relied upon. So, much to the Nazis' annoyance, they had to postpone their planned invasion of Russia, Operation Barbarossa, and intervene in the Balkans crisis that the Italians had created. Getting involved in the Balkans was not part of the Nazi game plan or strategy, but because Italy was an ally of Nazi Germany, they felt that they really had no choice, so intervene they did. And because of this intervention, the Axis powers were able to swiftly defeat the army of Yugoslavia and effectively bring into their sphere of influence the likes of Hungary, Bulgaria, Yugoslavia, and stabilize that region. And for a time there is the, the Balkans was relatively stable. All that however was due to change, especially because of Germany's invasion of Russia. Now the Serbs have always been closely allied to Russia, funnily enough. World War I, in real terms, started because the Austro-Hungarians tried tried to crush Serbian resistance prior to World War I and following the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand in Sarajevo by Serb nationalists. And the Russians came to their assistance and declared war on both the Austrian Empire and Germany, effectively starting the Great War. So there's, there's a long history between the Serbs and the Russians. And with the German invasion of Russia, coupled with the lack of German troops on the ground in the Balkans, this gave rise to Serbians rising up and engaging in partisan activities. Now this was initially done by the Chetniks, and again it tied up German troops, meaning that the Germans had to send more troops back into Yugoslavia to quash these partisan activities and uprisings. By 1942, however, the Germans had effectively had enough of tying up valuable resources in the Balkans, and an SS general, Gottlob Berger, proposed setting up a Bosnian Muslim division in order to release German troops and send them to the east, and for those troops to maintain security for the region. This was an idea that was shared by another SS general, Arthur Thout, who noted that Bosnian Muslims bear a special status as being persecuted by almost everybody on the planet. This was something that fascinated Himmler, and he loved the idea. He had always been fascinated by the Islamic faith, and he believed that it created fearless soldiers. He thought that Muslims would make perfect SS soldiers because they are promised heaven if they are killed in battle. 
Initially, there were concerns around the race argument, but the Germans found a really canny way around this. They just accepted theories put forward by Croat and German nationalists that stated Croats and Muslims are not officially Slavs. They are pure Aryans due to their Gothic and Iranian ancestry. Problem solved. With the race factor conveniently solved, Arthur Thaups was then tasked with forming the very first non-Germanic SS division, which he did. Although the Germans did encounter resistance from Croatian nationalists who were concerned that by raising an entirely Muslim division, this would fan the flames of a Muslim uprising against them. But the Germans found a simple solution to this. They merely added in Gothic letters the word Croat on the cuff title. And they made sure that the officers were Croatian Catholics. Problem solved yet again. Recruitment was then handed over to a German called Karl von Kempler, an SS officer who spoke Serbo-Croat and was a so-called Islamic expert. He was to work alongside Suja, a Bosnian Muslim, and together they set about recruiting. However, both men soon fell out, with Suja concerned by Kempler's use of mainly Muslim emblems and colours, as well as meeting with Muslim politicians who were opposed to the Croat Hutazi state. This recruitment drive, however, wasn't exactly effective, so Himmler requested the involvement of the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, a Sunni cleric in charge of all the Islamic holy sites in Jerusalem, and who was, at the time, oddly enough and conveniently, a resident in Berlin. The Mufti visited Sarajevo, Zagreb and Banja Luka in order to agitate support from the Muslim population and therefore boost recruitment. Despite the Mufti's seal of approval, recruitment was done at its best and it fell significantly short of the numbers required to form the division. In fact, recruitment was so dire that Himmler had to concede to allowing a 10% Catholic component to this division, which led to just under 3,000 Catholics being recruited into what was meant to be a purely Muslim division. By this stage, the division itself comprised of about 23,200 Muslims, 2,800 Catholics and numerous Germans, all of whom were officers. By the time it was ready, it was still considerably on the strength and almost all its officers were Germanic. The Germans, however, still had concerns and before the unit was sent into action, it was moved to France to undergo further training. Whilst in France, however, the division mutinied, <laughs> led by some notable Muslims. They killed numerous German officers, including von Kempler, and they tried to rally around the Muslims in order to gain support to reach out to the Western Allies and effectively surrender. The mutiny was eventually quashed and it was put down to infiltration by Tito's partisans. The division was then immediately transferred to Germany to finish its training and where the Germans could keep a closer eye upon it. By February 1944, the division's training was completed and it was immediately returned to Yugoslavia to deal with anti-partisan activities against Tito's partisans. And from March 1944 until September 1944, that is what the division dealt with. During this period, however, Tito offered a general amnesty to anybody who left the division and quite a few took up this offer and they moved from doing anti-partisan activities to becoming partisans and taking up the fight against the Germans. In October 1944, the division again mutinied once the Red Army had captured Belgrade in October. An imam in the division led a further mutiny leading Himmler to disarm the disloyal Bosnians who were in turn transferred to labor battalions and auxiliary units. By now the Red Army advance was unstoppable and the remains of the unit retreated into Austria where it eventually surrendered to the British. The division, while successful in its anti-partisan activities, was both brutal and savage, especially against Serbs and Jews within the Yugoslavian territory, not only during combat operations. In many of its areas of operations, numerous reprisal attacks were undertaken against the Serbian civilian population, leaving many thousands of Serbs dead. After the war, 38 members of this unit were tried for war crimes, with all being found guilty. 
with 10 being sentenced to death and eventually executed, and the other 28 given lengthy prison terms. All, however, were released in 1952. Interestingly, approximately 1,000 of those who had served in the 13th and the 23rd divisions, both of whom are Muslim divisions, eventually ended up in the Syrian army during the 1948-1949 Arab-Israeli War. I've been Fujit. That has been a brief look into the Nazis' Muslim soldiers. One of the more well-known of the bizarre SS divisions. By all means, comment and like and everything below. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. It's a lovely thing to do. You can always send me emails to fugitsblitz at gmail.com. Until the next time, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the content.